Like, babe, like, what do you, should I just sit there and let it, let the sweat run down my face? Like, what is the other option? You know, all right, Dad, let me welcome you to Over a Drink, brother. I appreciate you giving me a couple minutes of your time, man. Okay. So what we do, man, is we sit here, we pour a drink, we rap till the drink is done. Cool. That's how it works, right? Now, I know you don't drink. So I got this, uh, this elixir that my wife makes, man. And if you don't mind, I'll share that with you. Hey man, I'll take it. I'll let you me know, see what it's for. so it's uh, it's <laughs> a little bit of ginger. It's ginger, turmeric, uh, manuka honey, uh, black pepper to activate it. Maybe we'll just do shots of this for the for hey the for, for the length of the hey show. Man, let me let me go ahead. You and get some water. <laughs> I, I think I, I think I might be in some trouble. This is super healthy, man. All natural. This thing smell like gas. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet toast, man. Thanks, man. Appreciate you. Let me have a little sip. So it might Woo. burn a little bit. Woo. You are the founder and creator of Bungie Brand. Yes. All right, tell me, talk a little about Bungie Brands. What is it? Bungie Brand is a high-end sneaker company. I know that everyone uses the word high-end, and it took me about seven, eight years to be able to make sure that it was really high end. Woo. So y'all do, <laughs> so do sneakers, y'all do clothing, mm -hmm. everything. Hats, everything, yep. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the story, man. How did it come to be? Um, it all got started, um, or my love for, for fashion, everything got started when I was a rap artist. And, um, you know, once I, and I, this thing got my mouth on fire. <laughs> um, anyway, I started off when I was a rap artist. you wore that, man? No, I'm good, I'm good. good. Yeah. Um, I started off as a rap artist and, um, you know, I just, you know, had a love for fashion. Ever since I saw Crush Groove, Run DMC with the shoelaces out there, sneakers, and it was just a good look. So I just fell in love with fashion. That's when it all started. Then I uh, had a couple record deals, lost the record deals. I couldn't stay out of trouble. Went to prison a few times. And on my third time in prison, I just, I had to make some changes. You have music out? Yeah. <coughs> um, excuse me. This thing, man. <laughs> I just don't know. I yeah. mean, it's, it's good, but this thing. This is going to be a long show, fire. man. Yeah, I actually had music out. Um, I had a song on the radio on Power 99. Um, you know, early on called C-Notes and Grants. My rap name was Fourth Quarter. And um, it did really well. And then... Right around the time we started to get a lot of airplay, get a lot of love from the radio stations, I go to jail. Mm. I come home, start all over again, and then we ended up moving, or I ended up moving to St. Louis, started doing things out there, things started to come together for me, go to jail. You know what I mean? Then I come home, start doing it all over again, and within a couple months I realized that music wasn't really paying my bills. So... I got teamed up with a friend of mine, or he actually used to be my manager in the music business, and um, I got teamed up with him, and we ended up doing a customized sneaker store down South Street. Dude, so I'd just like to say, man, had we had social media back when you was going to jail, you'd have yeah. been the whole shit of the whole night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely. I definitely, I, I definitely would have been. I definitely would have been, because I'm telling you, like, I was always on top of my stuff, and right when everything just seemed like it was about to hit the pinnacle... Bam. You know what I mean? I'm so mad that social media wasn't out back then, because you're right. I would have been a martyr in this joint, man. You know what I'm saying? So, you would have been yeah. killing it in the rap yeah, game right definitely, now. Definitely. Third time you go to jail, you're like, look, enough is enough. Yeah. All right. And As a matter of fact, no. When I first went to jail the third time, I just planned on trying to make my things better than what I did last time. I was planning on going Same back to drugs again. I was going to do it. And it wasn't until uh, I lost my grandfather while I was in there. And once he passed away, that's when I was like, all right, I got to get my stuff together because the next time I come here to be my mom and my dad. I prayed on it. And then, no lie, like shortly after that, I ended up picking, picking my pencil up and started sketching. And the first sketch that I came up with, it looked like it was a shoe laid on a piece of paper. And I never sketched before in my life. So I know that, you know, something made me create that sneaker. Yeah. Something made it where I was that good at it. So I knew that this was my calling. You were already a creative, right? Because you were, you were a rapper, right? So you already had creativity in you. Was it like, like, oh shit, I could do this too? Or was it like, oh shit, like? Um, with me, I'm like very hard on myself. So even though it looked as good as it did, 
I was looking at it like, man, I got to get a couple packs of cigarettes and go out to the yard and I'm going to walk up to the first dude that I see sketching because there's a lot of artists and stuff mm -hmm. that's in there. So I basically took my, my, my papers out and I'm like, listen, I just created this, but I want to know how to shade it. I want to be able to, you know, make my shoe look like it's real because at that time I wasn't really focused on creating my own brand. I was more focused with trying to create artwork that I could put on my wall when gotcha. I got home. So that's how it started off. And it was mm -hmm. just so much stuff that the dude taught me that um, I took it back in and I started sketching more and I started sketching more. And it was like every photo that I did, it just got better and better and better. And then by like the fourth or fifth one, my celly was like, yo, like you need to think about really getting these shoes done for real. Like you really need to like take this seriously. And then, you know, of course, you know, you got the people in the jail. It's like, man, you ain't going to come up with no sneaker. Like, would you think you Nike now? <laughs> and it's like, you got all the naysayers. Yeah, yeah, then, you know, always. You call home and you tell your family, your friends what you're doing. They're like, man, I don't think, I think that you got to prison and, and, and you're getting brainwashed. Like, you can't do that. How do you think you're going to come home and do that? And the more that people kept telling me that I couldn't do it, the more motivated that I got to do it. And once I got it to where I wanted it, then I was like, okay, I got to get a business plan. Like, that's how I got my start. So I wasn't trained. No one told me how to do anything. Um, I had more negative responses from people than positive. Mm -hmm. And I just kept pushing. But that's that's always the case, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, it's going to be naysayers no matter what you do, no matter how good you are at it. Yeah. Well, the so only thing of it is that kills me is it's like, I've never been like that. Like, I'm the type of person that if you come up with an idea, I'm like, yo, man, it sounds good. If you can figure it out, go ahead and go for it. Yeah. You'll be surprised at how many people that was like, you can't do that. Like, you think everybody gonna be walking around in your shoe? You know what I mean? And then it was like, you know, even when I got the shoes and I'm trying to sell them now, it's like, what, you think you Gucci or something? Yeah. And I'm like, nah, I think I'm Daryl. I don't think I'm Gucci. I, I, I'm Daryl and I know for a fact that I know fashion. If you think about our culture, mm -hmm. who is the one that, that makes this clothing pop? Us. Us, yeah. I just so it's to... like, if we're the ones that's making it pop, you do realize that none of us are creating the clothes. None of us are creating it, right? So it's like, we make We take we everything create? and we make it cool, but we don't make anything. Yeah. Right? Yeah. How crazy is that, yeah. right? And, and the thing of it is that that's even more messed up is like, you know, this is the part of the business that got really difficult for me because when it comes time for any other race, it could be Italian, it could be anyone. When it comes time for our community, we respect it like it's 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 golden. Mm -hmm. We respect it like it's quality. But if you have a black guy that's creating a, a, a clothing brand, it's it's bootleg. Yeah, like it's automatically bootlegged in our community. Like we automatically think of bootleg, and I'm yeah. like, I'm trying to figure out like, is it because we're used to seeing people come through the barber shop selling stuff out of bags, like? What is it that makes it where we got to have that expensive sounding name in order for anyone to think that it's, it's official. official? Yeah, you I don't know, I, mean? know. I don't know. And I wish I did, you know, because, because I mean, we all, because I, I, I don't know where it comes from, right? I remember years ago, this was probably like 96, 97, um, which we call MTV Real World. Yeah, that just started that. to pop, that. right? And I was working with this kid and he wanted to be on Real World. So he was running around with a little video camera like, yo, can you do a quick testimonial for me so I can get on the joint? And I was that naysayer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, yo, dude, you ain't gonna never get on there, man. <laughs> and he says to me, he said, yo, Mike, man, why would you say something like that? And I said, you know what, you're right, man. Like, why would I say something? But I think I needed somebody to check me mm -hmm. because I had come up the same way, right? Yeah, Listening yeah, to the naysayers. Yeah. Every time I had an idea, somebody would tell me, yeah. nah, that ain't gonna work, that ain't gonna work. So now I'm just passing that on, right? To the next person. And when he said that to me, it kind of, kind of hit me in my soul almost. Like, yeah, man, like, why would you say yeah, that to yeah, that like, dude? Like, just, why would you crush you this hair. dude's dream? Yeah, like, yeah, who yeah. the hell are you? And I said, you know what, man, you're right, man. I'm sorry, man. Turn the camera on, let's do this testimonial, man. Now, I don't know if you ever got on, but that being <laughs> man, I said- I thought you was going to tell nah, me- nah, nah, I thought you were going to tell me what the superstars nah, 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 nah. A lot of times, people will say stuff like that because of their fears that they think that they can't do. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's already bad enough. I can only speak for myself. I was very confident that I could make this work, but at the same time, I'm not going to be naive and think, oh, I'm going to go home and I'm going to get funding for this. Yeah. I got to figure out how I'm going to be able to get the funding to even pay for Correct. this. Correct. And- when you have a sneaker company, it's not like clothing. Like with clothing, you can go to Fifth Street and grab, you know, a couple Gildans 
and then you know go to King, you know, to the mall or something, and press Put your name on and you say you got go. a high end clothing line. You can start off like that. Yeah. But when it comes time for sneakers, you don't have that same luxury. Mm -mm. And then it's like even like when you actually get your samples and everything done, when you go to place that order, it's a heavy bill. And the thing of it is that's crazy is that when it comes time for our people per se, mm -hmm. if you go in with a shoe, number one, if it may not be at the quality that they're used to seeing it, you already got one strike. That's right. Yeah, for sure. Number two, if they never heard of it. Two strikes. They not rocking. Yeah. And then number three, if they don't know anyone that wore it, and you out. It they, yeah. Man, get out of yeah, here. What are those? What are those? What are those? And the thing that was crazy is I just came home from jail when that saying came out. So mm -hmm. when people were saying, yo, what are those? And they had all the O's in it with the S. I'm like, oh, they really rocking with me. Yo, these Joneses, they call Bungie and da-da-da-da. And I'm playing myself because I really didn't know what what are those meant. You know what I mean? So it was like... Somebody ended up hitting me up and was like, yo, like, they playing you, man. Like, you, you looking crazy out here right now. <laughs> and I was really upset about it. Yeah. I'm like, yo, like, they playing with me. Like, I'm really trying to, to do this. And it wasn't because of the design being messed up. It was just it's the just... fact that I didn't know manufacturing. I didn't understand fabrics. I didn't know how all that worked because it was, like, fresh out of prison for me. And the hardest thing out of everything is if you create something that no one's ever seen before, it's like, oh, no, nah, I'm not messing yeah. with that. Yeah. If you create something that looks like something else, they're gonna be like, man, that ain't nothing but a such and such. Right. So it's like, so where's the happy medium? Yeah, you're between a rock and a hard and place. Then on top of all that, you have to think ahead of the curve because right now I gotta create stuff for winter and spring of 2022 and 23. Mm -hmm. So all the stuff that you're going to see from us this year, we created that last year. Yeah. So it's like you gotta not only try to create something that is fresh and new. But you got to make it so that it's kind of similar. That's what people already know. But at the same time, you got to think ahead. If a person took the time out to think about what a person does to be able to do their business, whether it's me doing sneakers or whether it's someone else doing something else, people don't understand all the work that goes into yeah. it. And if you're not interested in that business, then just don't say anything. Correct. Why do you got to go out of your way to talk about how effed up you think this boy's situation is? Yeah, like He yeah, put a lot yeah, of yeah. hard work into that. Like, you know, when I got my sneakers done, I put a lot of hard work into that. I spent my last dime on it. And for someone to sit there and say, what are those, what are those trying to clown me? It's like, bro, like, you don't even know what I just went through. And then you're comparing me to Nike that's been here for years and has yes. billions of dollars. I'm working off of a thousand dollars that I had to save up over three months. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I'm like, in the game. Yeah, like, cool, respect man. that. It's just messed up the way that our culture is because it's like, once I got to a certain level, it was like a light switch. Once I got that plug from B-Hop, then it was like, oh, B-Hop mess with him? Oh, okay, it's let me go ahead and try now. him out. Yeah. And then it was like, once I got another plug from Tone Trump, then it was like, oh, well, Tone Trump rock with him. Let me see what it's... So it was like, you just got to get them on the right people, but it's not fair because it's like, for me, if I go to any kind of store, I don't care what store that it is, if I go into the store... And I see something that I like, mm -hmm. I'm not going to sit there and be like, oh, I seen Meek wear that. Let me yeah. go grab that. Yeah. Or I just saw Meek on TV with that. I got to go get that. I'm going to go grab what I think looks right on me. And I know that every individual is not the same. True. Because I know that there's a couple different type of individuals. Mm -hmm. You got the leaders that's willing to take the risk. You got the people that follow. And you got the people that follow the, the people that follow. Correct. You know what I mean? After correct. it already pops off, then they, then they get on. Yep. You know what I mean? So it's like... I guess I'm the guy that's the leader. You're one of the leaders. I don't want what everyone else wears. Like, even Same. back in the day, Same. everybody start, first started getting Jordans. I was wearing shell tops. Bro. Yeah. yeah. Everybody was wearing shell tops. I, I don't want to wear what everybody yeah, else has on. I went to Pumas, then I went to the Adores, then I went to Kangaroos. Correct. I don't want to wear what everyone else has on. I don't want to walk out my house yeah. and bump into somebody with the same outfit. Exactly. Dude, I don't wear the family reunion t-shirts in my family because <laughs> everybody else got one on. <laughs> what I think happens with our community is we get burnt out with fake stuff. We get burnt out with people that's not really legit. Mm. And the thing of it is you gotta remember, if you think about our neighborhood, you always had them dudes that was trying to get that quick buck. Even when it came time for drug dealing, I knew dudes that was making fake work just so they could try to get a couple of dollars. They didn't care who they burnt. I think that in our communities, a lot of people are so like interested in trying to eat today yeah. They're not thinking about eating next month or Correct. three months from now. Correct. So what happens is 
if someone says, yo, I'm going to start my clothing line, they don't do the due diligence and the research to go find out how to make a quality product. Everyone automatically says, I'm going to go grab a t-shirt. I'm going to go stamp my name on it, and I'm going to put a high caliber name on it, and I'm going to run around. I'm going to try to sell it to the brothers that wear Gucci, mm -hmm. Louis Vuitton, and all that. If you wear a Gucci shirt or a Louis Vuitton, any of them high-end brands, you're going to know the difference between a Correct. Gucci shirt and a Gildan shirt. Correct, right away. You know what I'm saying? Yes. That's cool? For sure. Yeah, no, that's good. Yeah. So you're going to know the difference right away. If you get pushed in that direction and you get some kind of shirt that you're trying to support from someone and, and it's a black shirt but that junk look gray after I wash it or it shrinks or whatever what the situation happens. may be. That's what happens. You're not going to want to get a brand from, like you're not going to want to get that brand. That, that happens. And, and, yeah, exactly. And the thing of it is, is when you think about it, everyone pretty much does it. Mm -hmm. So after you get hit with that a certain amount of times, after a while, you're not going to purchase anything. And it's happened with, with, with products that were, with brands that were rocking. A lot of times... The individual thinks that he's doing right. It's the manufacturer that mm. we don't know. Yeah, we don't you know. know. I mean? Like, yeah, like we when, don't I, know. when I end up hitting my manufacturer up that's overseas, and I'm like, you know, hey, I want such and such material. They could put on the tag whatever they want. Got you. I can look at it and see that it says such and such, but what do we really know? We don't really know. No, you're right. You know, so it's like, you know, I guess. It could be our fault because once we get the merchandise back, we should wash it. We should do like a crash test mm -hmm. type thing. And, you know, I've learned to do that. As a consumer, I guess you don't think about that, right? You know what I mean? And are you supposed to think about it? I don't know. You're well, not you so, you don't to, know, yeah, right? Because you're you don't know. I'm just stickers. purchasing a product, yeah, yeah, right? I don't know. You're not about what that person has to go through. That's none of your business. Correct. You know what I mean? Correct, like, right? I'm trying to purchase this. If it's not right, I'm coming at you. There it is. It's just that simple. And, it's, and, and, it's and that's how it should be. And that's what it is, right? But you know, rapping with you and getting a better understanding of how just the apparel industry works and all the hurdles, man, and, and everything that you have to go through to make this thing happen. And, Dude, it gives and, you a newfound appreciation. Yeah. And it's like a fraternity because it's like, you know, they'll let you get to the little cheap factories that's, you know, going to give you some, some BS. Mm -hmm. But if you get to the high-end factories, you got to get brought in to be able to do that. Yeah. You gotta be worthy of it. You gotta have the money to be able to get in and do it. So it was like, like I was trying to explain to you earlier, it was like a light switch. It was like one day I couldn't get anything. I couldn't cross that threshold. And then the next day it was like, bam, like a man now. I got all the- Who got you in? Um, money. I got investors. <laughs> you know I mean? There once, it is. Once I had the coin to be able to there do it, is. Do, there wasn't no holding me back at that point. Yeah, I, I didn't know you wanted another round. I ain't know if you can handle it. I can handle it, man. It's burning me, but I'm cool. With I ain't know if you can handle it. Yeah. So, um, you know, dealing with all that that I just said is difficult because the average person in our community wants the fast buck. Yeah. The average person in our community needs the fast buck. Hmm. The only reason why I was able to make mistakes and move the way that I moved was because I had a machine behind me when I got involved with the situation. If it wasn't for that, yeah, you know, I don't know if I would have been able to maintain what I was doing because I was basically cutting hair and I was saving money and I was trying, and I wouldn't have been able to afford to make the mistakes that were made. In the beginning, when I first did mine and I got stuck with that bad batch of sneakers, I remember how difficult it was for me because I had to keep paying storage fees for sneakers that no one wanted, hmm. you know? So for like two years, I have a bad batch of sneaks and they just sitting in storage. And I'm like, I want to sell them because I want to get my money back because we spent like almost $50,000 on this, you know? And there was nothing that I could do with them. It was like, I just kept paying monthly fees, monthly fees. And it's like, after a while, it just got harder. It became yeah. a bill. After you run out of your resources, you don't have any money, you don't have anything to market and promote, you don't, you can't really do anything. It's like, what can you do at that point? So what I did was, all right, I'm gonna save more money. I'm, you know, gonna get, you know, these Eagles sneakers. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Eagles is blowing up. Yeah. <laughs> get these Eagles joint. <laughs> yeah. So I ended Be up back doing in the game. that. And uh, it took a couple months to get them back. I was right back in the game. I'm back. That's I went valid. out there, my whole car was filled up with Eagle sneakers, bro. Like. I pulled up, I had like this little bag with me. I had a sneaker in my hand. I seen uh, Monty G, I seen all these, I'm like, yo, 
I didn't have to even say anything. Once they saw them, it was a it was wrap. Game on. And I promise you, I, I pretty much almost sold out right there. And then I ended up going down to the st stadium and sold the rest. And I thought I was on to something. So I went to go make my second order. And that's when I got hit with the, yo, bro, you can't do that. Like, what do you <laughs> think this is? They, they got I love, I love. license in and all. You can't just do that. And I'm like, why not? I see all kind of people putting eagle stuff on their sneakers. Everything, right? Yeah, they're like, no, you can't do that. So that kind of like shut me down right then and there. So then I had to go into another direction. And then it was like the sneakers didn't sell as well as the Eagle sneakers did. <laughs> so it was like, you know, it was up and down. It was like, that's the name Bungie. It was yeah. up and down for me throughout the whole business. And, um, you know, it's, it's difficult, man. It's like now I have such a newfound respect for entrepreneurs. Mm. So now whenever I'm walking, if someone is trying to sell something, I buy it, even if I don't even want it. Look at that. Because that little... $15, $20 t-shirt they trying to pump, that might help them get to that next level. That's right. And it was brought to my attention from a friend of mine. He was just talking to me in general, like, yo, like, here's just over some, some, some food. He was like, you know how women have baby showers? I'm like, yeah. He's like, you know, we always get them diapers and this and that. He was like, how about if we get together and do a, a business shower? Hmm. And invite everybody over and everybody comes just to make a purchase from that person just to try to help. How about baby. that? How about oh, that? It's genius. It's genius, right? And it's like, all you got to do is just get all your group of friends together. Like, look, man, I'm having a business shower. Just and come then you, through. And then you come through, you contribute, that person gets on his feet, and then you have another, you know, business shower. Do for somebody for else. You. Yeah. And you do that same thing. Just... You just continue to, to evolve. And at that point, you know, at this business shower, not only are people supporting you, but they can tell you their thoughts too. Let's get together as a community and really make it happen, because I look at it like there's probably about 100 clothing companies in Philly right now. Easy. 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 Just imagine if everybody put their bread together and came up with one. Ralph Lauren who? Correct, you right? Correct. Like, we knock them out the box now, and everybody eats. If you think about it, you got talented dudes like you to do the film work. You got dudes that do you know computer work, websites. If we could all come together and form one company, we would eat automatically. You know how many intelligent people was out there that we could put Dude. a team together and really kill it? Dude, and all of us Dara, eat. I, I've been saying the same thing, man. I say it for years, man. And Where I, do we and start? I, I don't know, man, because you know I mean? I've like, even said to, look, I say to people all the time, man, this is what I can do. Here's my craft, here's my skills, right? If you can use this to advance you, Let's work together. Like, this is it's not always about you putting money in my pocket. You gonna say this to me right here? You know what I'm you saying? You might as well come on over, I baby. Say that all you part of Bungie brother, now, baby. Been... You part of Bungie now, baby. <laughs> <laughs> he shouldn't have said that to me, baby. He shouldn't have said that on camera. <laughs> said, said that. Now, now he gotta commit to this. He probably <laughs> gonna erase this part. But I've been saying that for years, man. I'm like, yo, man, it's not about me coming up off of you or you coming up off of me. It's about us coming up together. Yeah. Right. It's about you using me and me using you. And we just we both do the best we can to do the best we can for yeah. each other. And hopefully at the end of the day, man, it's a come up for both of us. It really wouldn't, and if it, it's it, really not, would, it really wouldn't even be a hopefully like the only thing that gets me is the fact that if you think back through history and especially through music. Yeah, everybody knew who Adidas was, but Adidas popped when Run DMC Correct. walked around with that big gold Correct. chain with their Adidas on their jacket. Correct. Do you know what that did for Adidas? Oh, no doubt. Do you know what Grand Poobah did for Tommy Hilfiger? Correct. You could make the argument at a time we didn't have access to the information. Yeah. Now the information is in your pocket. Definitely is. You know what I'm saying? You walk around with the answers to so many questions right yeah. in your pocket right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So right now, there's really no excuse anymore, man. I mean, as of right now, you can, you could definitely make that like very clear because I came home from jail and started a sneaker company. Boom. With I mean, no experience, no type of skill, no education on it, nothing. So if I could do that, anyone can do anything. But look, man, we're going to wrap and this up. And I'm finished and my, my drink, drink is done, too. So we're going to wrap the show up. All right, baby. Daryl, it's a pleasure, man. Every time I get a chance to kick it with you, man.